Chapter eighty eight of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter eighty eight Our Body Washed. Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty two. Let us draw near, our body washed with pure water. Man belongs to two worlds, the visible and the invisible in his constitution the material and the spiritual body and soul are wonderfully united in the fall both came under the power of sin and death in redemption deliverance has been provided for both it is not only in the interior life of the soul but in that of the body too that the power of redemption can be manifested in the old testament worship the external was the more prominent it consisted mostly in carnal ordinances imposed until a time of reformation they taught a measure of truth they exercised a certain influence on the heart but they could not make the worshipper perfect it was only with the new testament that the religion of the inner life the worship of god in spirit and truth was revealed and yet we need to be on the watch lest the pursuit of the inner life lead us to neglect the external it is in the body as much as in the spirit that the saving power of christ jesus must be felt it was with this view that our lord adopted one of the jewish washings and instituted the baptism with water he that believed with the heart came with the body to be baptized it was a token that the whole exterior physical life with all its functions and powers was to be his too it was in this connection john wrote there are three who bear witness the spirit and the water and the blood the same spirit who applies the blood in power to the heart takes possession and mastery of the body washed with water and where in scripture the word and water are joined together ephesians five twenty six john thirteen ten and fifteen three it is because the word is the external manifestation of what must rule our whole outer life too it is in this connection the two expressions are used here our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience our bodies washed with pure water the thought was suggested to our author by the service of the tabernacle in the court there were only two things to be seen the brazen altar and the laver at the one the priest received and sprinkled the blood at the other he found the water in which he washed ere he entered the holy place at the installation of the priests in their office they were first washed and then sprinkled with blood exodus twenty nine four and twenty on the great day of atonement the high priest too had first to wash ere he entered into the holiest with the blood leviticus sixteen four and so the lesson comes to us that if we draw near with hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience we must also have the body washed with pure water the liberty of access the cleansing the blood gives can only be enjoyed in a life of which every action is cleansed by the word not only in the heart and the disposition but in the body and the outer visible life everything must be clean who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart a heart sprinkled with the blood a body washed with pure water from every stain these god hath joined together let no man separate them there have been some who have sought very earnestly to enter into the holiest of all and have failed the reason was that they had not clean hands they were not ready to have everything that is not perfectly holy discovered and put away cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double-minded is a word that always holds the blood of christ has unspeakable and everlasting power for the soul that with a true heart is ready to put away every sin where this is not the case and the body is not washed with pure water the perfect conscience which the blood gives cannot be enjoyed our body washed with pure water it is not only in spirit but with the body too we enter into the holiest of all it is on us here where we are in the body that the presence of god descends our whole life in the flesh is to be in that presence the body is very specially the temple and in charge of the holy spirit in the body the father is to be glorified our whole being 
body soul and spirit is in the power of the holy spirit a holy sacrifice upon the altar a living sacrifice for service before god with the body too we live and walk in the holiest our eating and drinking our sleeping our clothing our labor and relaxation all these things have more influence on our spiritual life than we know they often interrupt and break the fellowship we seek to maintain the heart and the body are inseparably joined a heart sprinkled from an evil conscience needs a body washed with pure water when he cometh into the world he saith a body didst thou prepare for me this word of christ must be adopted by each of his followers nothing will help us to live in the world and keep ourselves unspotted but the spirit that was in christ that looked upon his body as prepared by god for his service that looks upon our body as prepared by him too that we might offer it to him like christ we too have a body in which the holy spirit dwells like christ we too must yield our body with every member every power every action to fulfil his will to be offered up to him to glorify him like christ we must prove in our body that we are holy to the lord the blood that is sprinkled on thy heart came from the body of jesus prepared by god and in his whole life even to his one offering given up to god the object of that blood sprinkling is that thy body of which the heart sprinkled with the blood is the life should like his be wholly given up to god o oh, seek to take in this blessed truth and to accept it fully the heart sprinkled from the evil conscience will then become an unbroken experience and the blood of the lamb the ever-living motive and power for a life in the body like christ's a sacrifice holy and acceptable to god i am deeply persuaded that in the self-pleasing which we allow in gratifying the claims of the body we shall find one of the most frequent causes of the gradual decline of our fellowship with god do remember it was through the body that satan conquered in paradise it was in the body he tempted christ and had to be resisted it was in suffering of the body as when he hungered that christ was perfected it is only when the law of self-denial is strictly applied to the body that we can dwell in the holiest he was tempted in all points like as we are in his body very specially and is able to succour us let the committal of our body into the keeping and the rule of jesus be very definite and entire if miranda was to run a race for her life she would submit to a diet that was proper for it as the race which is set before her is a race for holiness and heavenly affection so her everyday diet has only this one end to make her body fitter for this spiritual life end of chapter eighty eight